everybody, and welcome to the Pat Jones Show. I'm Robbie Robertson, along with Oklahoma State head football coach Pat Jones. This past Saturday, Oklahoma State won their second ball game in a row, beating Iowa State 27-21. The offense created 340 yards. The defense created eight turnovers. So, Pat, this important two-game homestand that you've been talking uh, uh, to us about goes down in the books as mission accomplished. Well, obviously, we've gotten some things done, and, and we've talked about this off and on for the last several weeks. Again, you had these two ball games at home, one of them being homecoming, which was this last Saturday, that uh, very important for us to get some momentum going. Now we've got to go on the road for a couple of weeks here. And, uh, we won the ball game. I, I really thought that in certain areas, Robbie, offensively we were probably a little bit more ragged than we had been. On the same hand, we still got some things done and generated some big plays. Really, the only <clears throat> only downer involved was that, that we had three fumbles, which really gave them a crack at us. And here we're having to field onside kicks and, and, and hold on to your breath right there at the end. But uh, other than that, I think we played pretty well. We had a few penalties that you shouldn't ought to have, and I didn't think either one of the quarterbacks were what I consider real sharp, although they both did some good things. So, again, it was certainly a good ball game to win. you got to give Iowa State a lot of credit for – for battling back, uh, it, it was 6:03 left in the ball game. We're ahead 27 to seven. Saying then we had a couple of fumbles. They get back in the ball game. And, uh, they had lost their starting quarterback, so you got to give them a lot of credit. All right, let's take a look at the uh, first half highlights. Oklahoma State won the toss and went on offense, and uh, we had to uh, punt. Homecoming crowd, a nice crowd on hand, a parade earlier in the day. So after we punt on uh, on our first possession, uh, boy, Iowa State. Runs it right back at us. Well, we had made a couple of first downs and actually looked like we had a little something going, got stopped. Scott Tyner got off a 51-yard kick. A Spencer, their kick returner, who is a very dangerous guy, hits air. And, uh, again, Tyner can't get him pinned up, and he, he ran the punt back 90 yards. Now, I thought we did a very good job of handling things emotionally. I think this is where this football team of ours has made some improvement in that we didn't really get, let ourselves get down or any of this kind of stuff. Okay, now here we go. They've, <clears throat> we've gotten it back, and there's been a couple of exchanges. Uh, they've got the ball down our end of the field. Now defensively, let's watch here. Okay, Dimitri Markham missed the tackle. There's Jason Gilden, who I think really, really had an outstanding performance. Scotty Harmon, nice job of, of getting on the football and big turnover. Big, uh, again, they had eight turnovers for the afternoon. Uh, so, so here we go now. Quick screen out here to Denson. Uh, it's a nice job of blocking out here by Shannon Culver. And, Denson makes a 14-yard gain. Couldn't get the ball to him in the throwing game as much as we would have liked to, but it opened up some other areas for us. And I think he had 60-something yards running the sweep. They got in behind us here, and we got a little bit fortunate on an out-and-up type of deal. Okay, now here, here's a trap, and we're going to see a, a replay of it. I thought our, our run defense against their wishbone, it's the same group that essentially scored uh, 47 points and had 500 yards against right. Kansas last week, which was something that we were certainly concerned about. First time we've seen this style of play. But again, uh, Gildon, Michael Woolridge, uh, Keith Burns, uh, Rich Ainsley, Art Davis, some of those guys I thought really, really played well. Scotty Harmon. Again, defensively, I can't fault us for much of anything. Uh, again, we've got some people taking a, out there taking a shot at him. All right, there's Markham. I think it's Markham. Let's see what happens You're here. Right. All right, there's Cannon. There's Dimitri Markham ripping the ball out. Keith Burns, Richie Ainsley around the football. Uh, Cornell Cannon recovers it, and we've got it down on their end of the field. Turnover number two, and uh, we trail 7 nothing at the end of the first quarter, so now we move to second quarter action, and turnover number three coming up here. Well, we were doing some things and had done some things against the wishbone that if they're going to actually option things, which he are, so you can see his eyes going outside, and Gildon's executing things well, and, and there's a little bit of a moment of indecision on, on the quarterback's part, Bobby Utter. This type of offense now becomes a little bit high risk, and they fumbled it. We get it back. Nice throw by Porter out here to Shannon Culver. I thought Culver really had a good afternoon. 19 yards on a reception down to the four. Okay, now first down, we try We throw a little tight end sneak out there. Uh, Steve Keith gets open. This first time we've had this. We've thrown it before. Uh, we had talked about going in. The first time you get, we get first and goal down inside the five, let's don't be afraid to. Nice play fake by John White. And, Porter touches the ball out there where Steve Keith is by himself. It's touchdown Oklahoma State. Okay, so now we're all even at uh, seven apiece, and Iowa State goes back on offense, but they won't have it very long. Well, again, they couldn't sustain much consistently in the running game. Uh, Bobby Edder just this is where Utter the quarterback gets hurt right there, knock Markham out of bounds. Uh, so we're going to see this again. 
utter just a three step and turns and throws and again uh, Markham was right there and the ball got thrown right in his face again here's the lick right there and it did he Markham stepped out of bounds comes back in and now we didn't convert this in a touch the utter's okay by the way Jeff Farrar trainer and myself went by the hospital last night and set up there with him and he's okay he uh, we, we had a nice conversation with him I think he's going back to Ames this morning we that was where we we had first and goal and you didn't get a touch out of it to have to kick a field goal here they come back on the option and deal it and pitch it uh, again not much going there Keith Burns I thought considering that this is the first time he's seen this style of play I thought handled himself well and got better as the game went on David Brooks uh, again our, our, our defensive unit I think played well here again they try to run the little counter play Elmer Williams, Michael Woolridge, uh, they've got a well-conceived plan. Uh, McMillian, I think, uh, didn't was sick or something, didn't, didn't really have a big afternoon. He and Spencer, and they're both skilled guys. Okay, we put the shuffle in. We've done this over the years and kind of got to the point where we wanted to use it, and John White gets loose. Now, we, this was the 91-yard drive, the start of it. We put Andy Loveland in at quarterback because, again, I didn't think Gary was, was really sharp and not in a rhythm. Okay, same play, good job of Andy executing things, good job of John White making a nice cut and running through a couple of arm tackles here and, and gets outside and 40-yard gain again, that is, that's a good safe way to throw the ball around a little bit when you're backed up. They're trying to knock it out of his hands and John does a good job of hanging on to it. Uh, big play, get us out of a hole. Okay, here goes, this, here's Andy Loveland. Now this ball gets tipped. Uh, we, I don't think we caught that. No, we didn't. No, Miller could not get it down. Ended for Miller. Okay, draw play. Mark Williams, nice cut here. He explodes up the field for, for a first down. Again, I thought John White and Mark really played well. We've got to do a, a better job protecting the ball. I was a little bit surprised in Mark, and I can't really blame him, although we got to get better at it. Burt could have got that ball pulled down. Okay, here's, here's Andy. Nice Great job fake. on play fake. Yeah, well, it's the same play that we had thrown the first play of the ball game. And again, Porter had got a little bit of pressure and, and couldn't execute it quite as well. They rough the passer. We get a first down. Okay, turn around, toss the ball here on, on the sweep. Here's John White. Good job of tough running down in here. So we're down our end of the field. Okay, turn around, pitch it to John on the sweep again. He's running strong. So we're down around the, the 10 yard line. Okay, here we go right here. Uh, quarterback throwback, which we've thrown. We've, we've thrown it for touchdown pass in a couple of bowl games over the year. We had, uh, again, we've had this in. It's, it was a good, nice job, a good place on the field to run it. Good job of Mark Williams getting this ball off under pressure. <clears throat> it's kind of feast or famine. Andy was out there, and uh, again, we get the ball down. Good good job on Loveland's part. I thought here we sneak across. Loveland did a real good job, I thought, on this 91-yard drive of, of basically executing things and kind of getting us settled down. Uh, so at halftime, we're, we're ahead 17-7. to Cowboys lead 17-7 at halftime. They've held Iowa State to just 63 yards total offense in the first 30 minutes, and they forced four turnovers. We'll have second half highlights in just a minute. The Pat Jones Show continues right after this. Oklahoma State with a 10-point lead over Iowa State at halftime. Let's go to the second half highlights. and. Kind of a strange beginning because Iowa State had the option, Pat, well, and, and they're going to kick to you. Well, again, <laughs> there was their choice. We figured certainly they would take the ball, and, and we were prepared for this because they do a great job with these onside kicks. We had stood there and alerted our return team that, hey, something's got to be up here. They kick it back across the field and, and get the ball. Uh, good job our defensive unit going out there. I thought this was a really important exchange here. They, they drive them a couple of first downs. Youngster misses the field goal. Uh, again, 17 to seven, you got a little bit, obviously more breathing room than you would at, at 17 to 10. Okay, turn around and run Denson on the, on the motion and run the sweep here. He hits air, gets loose. I thought he might break this one all the way off right there. Uh, again, we had added just a little bit. This was something we, we did last week. With, again, we had, we'd added the pass off this action and, and you can see good job of the fullback and the tailback getting out in front of him. Nice job, Mark Spatz. Spatz had a good tough day at fullback, got a lot of work in. Uh, again, Denson was within one guy of breaking that one. And we, we couldn't do anything, but we get down there in the field. All right, they turn back around and throw it. Okay, good job, Harmon. Good job, uh, Fisher, Todd Fisher, I think. That's they run the option here. We've got things played pretty well. And the youngster slips down. McMillian slips, or that's Williams, I'm sorry, slips down. Uh, we never, really never felt like that they had real big cracks on the perimeter. We thought what we were doing was, was obviously holding up against the option there again, Denson ripping off the sweep. 
uh, here again, a little bit disappointed. We could not get the ball to him more in the throwing game, but I think our throwing game was a little bit more hit and miss than needs to be. Here he, here he is again. Now I'm thinking I wish we had kind of pumped it to him a little bit more on this kind of stuff. So, uh, again, good day by Denson run the ball. All right, here's Gary Porter back in at quarterback. Shuffle pass again to John White. Nothing. They've, they've got it defended pretty well here. All right, here goes Porter back. Uh, all right, this is a nice throw and catch to Shannon Culver. Denson is going to be, if you keep on the replay, repeat here, you can see Denson is lined up as the inside receiver, and, and they can't get a collision. You just barely see his feet up at the top. The guy cannot collision him. So conversely, we get the safety stretched, and they kind of bite on Denson. And again, so Shannon Culver runs by him. I thought, again, Culver really had a big day catching the football, had a good ball game. So it's in that touchdown Oklahoma State. Nice throw and nice catch. Uh, we put, uh, again, put Porter back in the ball game. So uh, good job defensively. Leading 24 to seven now, and, and you force Iowa State into uh, three straight turnovers. Okay, on next all right, yeah, here possession. we go right here. Again, he can't just drop the ball, and uh, we, we, we get it. Eight turnovers, obviously you get eight turnovers, you, you probably ought to score more than more points than we did, and we had ample opportunity to. All right, this is a nice job here. Porter going back and throwing this ball in the hole to Shannon Culver. Again, I thought Culver might break this one. He kind of slipped down inside the 20. But, uh, again, we kept on mixing the run and mixing the pass. And Like I said, we were a little bit more hit and miss in the throw-in game than, than, than you like and that we, we normally will be with both the quarterbacks. Again, Porter does a good job here. He's got a lot of big play potential, a very strong, quick arm. But here's Culver loose down the middle again. Mark Cheatwood downfield doing a good job of trying to spring him loose there. Well, Cheatwood had a good ball game also. I thought our really our entire receiver court played well. See, it's 24 to seven now. Heading into the fourth quarter. Heading into the fourth quarter. They've got the ball up around midfield. Okay, go back, sack Jason Gildon. There's the ball. David Brooks picks up and runs with it. I couldn't see anything going on from our sideline. I obviously saw the sack. I never did see David come out. Come out, here's a replay of it. Gildon, again, he continues to play. We can take, he just stuffs the blocker in there, strips the ball. Uh, again, now here's David Brooks picking it up and, and, and gets loose down the sidelines. That's turnover number six. Again, you, you'd like to think that if you, you could just knock a couple of these in for touches, you're probably going to put the game away. Okay, here's that same play action that we saw a minute ago with Porter throwing it to Cheatwood. Uh, good job, Mark, and Iowa State's hustling, playing hard. Unfortunately, we couldn't get it in, get stopped, kick a field goal. So it's, 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 it's 27 to 7 now, and I won't say we've got a comfortable lead, but we're really playing well defensively. It doesn't look like they've got a chance to do a heck of a lot. Robbie, is this following one of the turnovers? Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, this is the seventh turnover. Okay, that's their, their turnover. I, I can't remember when we started falling. Boy, this is a great run here by Keith Burns. Again, Burns is, is a big, big time athlete. I, I, Burns has got to. He's gotten himself in, in the position, really, as far as one of the better inside linebackers in the league. Okay, here's the onside kick. This is one of them. They, they've really come to come to life and scored a touch, a couple of touchdowns, but Jason Gildon comes up. Well, again, we here. fumbled the ball to give them a chance with field position. If we just don't fumble it, they're really never going to have a chance with the clock. Great play by Gildon there to recover it. Uh, this is actually the next to last play of the ball game. They get the ball back with 20 seconds left, no timeout. Too long. At that point, we got the ball game winning. Well, something completely crazy happens. But here we've had to field a couple of onside kicks. Good job of that group doing it. Good job, Cornell Cannon. You, your offense um, uh, played well enough to put 27 points on the board and, and 340 yards offense. But the defense against a team that right. a week earlier had rolled up over 500 yards, you hold them to 288, I think it was. You have to feel real good about your defense. Well, I, well, I do. Cause with the, and there in the latter stages, of course, again, I come back to us turning the ball over. Right. We had stop them or get a turnover and then bang we fumble one time on first down and we we're making some yards doing it i'm not faulting our effort we just got to protect the ball better but defensively we had we had to go uh, come back in get a glass of water and go right back out there and we were tiring pretty good defensively i think but really up until there at the at the last say we we're ahead 27 7 was 603 i think left in the ball game Burns starts cramping up. Uh, we lost Chaucer Funches. I think one of our other linebackers to broken hand. We got to put Carlos Irving back out there. He's playing with a broken hand. Guys are having to go overtime. Conversely, it was a hot day. I think we started cramping up a little bit, but I can't say enough really about our defensive unit. We, like I said, we played that wishbone well up until the last seven minutes of the ball game. They had virtually no offense, right. forced a bunch of turnovers. Offensively, again, not in real good sync, can play much better, but generated some big plays. 
Happy to win a ball game, certainly. Cowboys win it 27-21. Now four and three on the year, two and one in conference play. Stay with us. We'll be right back. The Pat Jones Show continues right after this. The Play of the Week is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Keith Burns really turned in a bunch of plays of the week. This happens to be his interception, Pat. Well, again, uh, in a day where there's a lot of turnovers, this shows you really what kind of natural athletic ability he's got. Uh, One-handed catch. Watch this. Now, Burns is so strong. He's a big-time athlete, and they tend to make big-time plays. He's, he's a guy that has been elected one of our captains. He's only been in here since the start of two-a-days. Look at this kind of stuff here. Like, never got him down. It is a heck of a guy that means an awful lot to this football team. And, again, we've seen this throughout the season. I mean, he is a dominant athlete and he can, as he continues to get better. The unofficial stats, I believe, say that uh, Keith had 14 tackles and had a fumble recovery in the interception as well. Uh, Pat, seven weeks uh, into the season now. Uh, what kind of improvement have you seen in this ball club from the start? Well, again, I think we tend to gain a little bit of ground almost every day we go out to practice because come back to this, some of these guys, and like Keith Burns, have only been in the program seven weeks now. But um, I think we're getting where we can handle the, the mood swings involved in a ball game quite a bit better. Again, we were down 7 nothing because of that punt return. Now, we didn't really get deflated about anything. I think we just rolled our sleeves up and went back out there and went to work. We're, I think offensively now we know, certainly know, know that we can generate some big plays ourselves. Those things are going to happen. Uh, but I think as far as just the team being a real football team, again, how to handle things. Uh, now we've got to deal with a few more injuries. Like everybody else in the country, those things are cropping up more and more. So we, somebody else is going to have to step up and, and assume some leadership, both in practice and in the game. But again, I think this team continues to build and continues to get better almost daily. All right. We'll have Cowboy Magic Moment, and then we go on the road for two weeks. We'll talk about that as the Pat Jones Show continues right after this. This Cowboy Magic Moment is brought to you by Johnson's of Kingfisher and Chickasha. Mike Hudson and Mark Moore are two names synonymous with Oklahoma State defense. Hudson number 10 and Moore number 44 were both defensive backs in the mid-1980s. Hudson was an all Big 8 selection while Moore was a two-time All-America. They were both known as big hitters. Mike Hudson and Mark Moore, another Cowboy Magic Moment. Guys delivered a lot of big blows. While we're here <coughs> big back. hitters, big yeah. hitters is putting it mildly. No, they were freshmen here in '83 and were part of those great defensive units. We had '83 and '45, '86, and again, excellent, excellent college football players. Again, like I said, Mark was a two-time All-American from Nacogdoches, Texas, and and then Hudson was from here in Hominy, Oklahoma, and, and excellent college football guys. Okay, you got to go on the road now to take on nationally ranked Kansas. What are your thoughts about that? Well, I, certainly Glenn Mason has done a, a marvelous job with that program at KU. They're, they're one of the hotter teams around, not only in this league, but, but nationally at this point. I don't think they've gotten nearly the, the amount of recognition, in all honesty, that, that they deserve. This has been a funny series. They've been down here the last two years. Two years ago here they beat us, I think it was 31-30, to 30, and we had a field goal that the gun hit the upright and jump out. And last year here in the snow, uh, they got on us pretty good. Uh, with that, I, can't, I, I know I can't remember exactly, but it has been back into the 70s, I think, since Oklahoma State has lost a game to KU at Lawrence. This is the best Kansas team I think we've seen probably going back to uh, maybe 85 or, or 81 or one of those years. Uh, they've got the big dominating people in the interior and they've got the great kicker. And uh, Chip Hiller, the quarterback, is, is probably having as good a year as, as any quarterback in this league. And they're on a roll right now. So this it will not be easy for us. And uh, on the same hand, I think we, we've got a little bit of momentum going ourselves. So uh, it, it's a series again that that has always been very hotly contested. So I'm sure we'll be anxious to, uh, and ready to play. All right, good luck to you. You should go on the road to take on the Kansas Jayhawks. We're out of time for today. Hope you will join us next week for the Pat Jones Show. For Pat Jones and Oklahoma State University, I'm Robbie Robertson. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>